Welcome to our October Hilltop Learning Series event. We're excited for all of you to join us tonight. Um, we have just a little housekeeping to get us started. So just some tips for Zoom. We're, um, we ask that you keep yourself muted. Um, you can unmute if you have questions, um, but just to cut down on background noise and things like that. Uh, just try to keep that to the minimum. You can also use the chat feature if you have questions for our presenters. Uh, you can submit them that way if you don't want to talk out loud. <laughs> uh, speaker view is probably the best way so that you can see what the panelists are doing and you um, there's some instructions on the screen right there how to toggle to speaker view if you want to change your view. First up we'll have Meredith Stein from the class of 14. Um, she graduated with a BFA in acting and um, she is going to lead us through a zombie makeup tutorial for Halloween. We're super excited and her partner in crime, Joe, is also a graduate of St. Ed's and his face will be the canvas <laughs> for you to take it all in. Um, after the makeup session, uh, Katie's going to take over. Katie's from the class of 2017. Um, and she is also a mixologist and she's going to lead us through some spooky cocktails to get us in the mood for Halloween. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over to Meredith and she's going to show us how to spookify our look for Halloween. Hi, Meredith. Hi, thank you all so much for coming um, and being here. The best part about zombie makeup, um, it's super simple. Um, we were talking about this earlier. You <laughs> really don't need much. Um, you can really work with anything in your color palette um, and anything that you have with you. Um, so I'm gonna show you just like kind of the basics, what we need to go through. We have it in the chat, um, super simple. Um, you are gonna need uh, just some, I ha just have a tinted moisturizer. Joe, of course, is a little bit darker than I am. Um, so I'm just gonna use on some on mine because of course a zombie is not a living person. So we want Joe to look a little bit deceased. Um, so we're gonna make him a little bit lighter. Um, we're gonna have some powder. Um, and again, we're gonna just go for like the, the lightest powder that you can find. If you don't have a light powder, it's totally fine. Um, and then I've got a bruise wheel here. It's just the Ben Nye bruise wheel. But if you have anything that's in like your greens, a green eyeshadow, a purple eyeshadow, a black eyeshadow, totally fine. Um, and then I also have a yellow because you want to think about like what's on the skin, um, what the skin does when it starts to, to decay. Um, and it, you want those bruisey colors. So you want like greens and purples and blacks and of course yellows. Um, and then for special effects, if you've got it, some fake blood, super exciting. Um, and then Joe, our zombie, is gonna have some maggots. So we're gonna put some rice on him. We had some arborio rice in our house, so. And then for sticking that rice on, we just got some spirit gum, super exciting. Um, okay, so just really, really lightly, uh, if you've got that foundation, we're gonna put it all over Joe's face just to lighten him up, yeah. Go ahead and put that on. If you all have questions, just throw them up in the chat. Joe will read them out to us. It'll be exciting. Beautiful. Yeah, we're just gonna make Joe look a little bit paler. Um, and the good thing about being a zombie and making up as a zombie is you really get to choose your canvas and you really get to choose what you look like and there's no right or wrong answer. Super exciting. Um, so how long you've been dead. So if you wanted to die yesterday, if you wanted to die six months ago and you have risen, it's totally up to you. Super exciting. So we're just gonna throw some paint on Joe here. And this part is always not super exciting because <laughs> it's just starting that canvas, but it'll get more exciting from here. Yes. Katie, and I'm then, 
Meredith, oh, go ahead. A student, did you do a lot of makeup for shows on campus? Yes. So I did a lot of hair and makeup. My background is mostly now in hair. Um, but we did, we got to take um, makeup classes. Like we did just like the basic theater makeup class. And then I also did the advanced uh, makeup classes. And they're just like, if you ever get to at St. Ed's, to take any of the makeup classes, they're, they're seriously so much fun. Cause you get to learn stage makeup and then going beyond that, like um, we did like, um, oh my gosh, beauty makeup, drag makeup, like anything. Ooh, got to have so much fun. Nice. Okay, so we have our base going. And what's nice too, especially with any kind of gore, you don't have to, change out sponges like a lot of the things like with beauty makeup you you kind of want to like keep your sponges keep your um your brushes really separate keep it all really neat but with gore makeup just like slap it on slap on that paint it's like a really fun canvas to like get really dirty um so that's what we're gonna do um and then thinking about how joe has died um where does the body start to decay? It's really exciting, really fun. So like all of, <laughs> this is kind of <laughs> gross, but it's also really exciting. So like thinking about all the places that get really soft. So like the inside of the eyes, like the inside of like the nose area. And so that's where we're gonna start throwing on the darker colors. Okay. So we've got in our bruise wheel, we have like some browns, we've got some blacks and some purples and some greens. So we're just gonna like start layering in these colors. Is that a liquid or a powder? It's kind of in between. Okay. Um, it is like a, like a paste almost. And okay. honestly, you could do either. That's okay. the best part about this kind of makeup is if you wanted to do like an eyeshadow, you can mix an eyeshadow in there. Or if you wanted to do like a liquid, you could do that. It doesn't matter, which is really exciting. Okay, so we're gonna throw some, I know I'm about it. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna start in here and make some bruising happen. How long deceased is Joe going to be today? Joe is gonna be about a week okay. old. Just kind of been walking around for about a week. He's starting to look very tired. And that's what you want. Just really rug, raggedy. Just kind of putting, putting those layers in. And again, you cannot mess this makeup up. I think that is the, the best thing is like, if you throw too much paint in there, you throw too much makeup, then your zombie is older. Your zombie has... <laughs> been walking around a little bit longer and that's okay. We don't discriminate on the age of our zombies. Oh no, we definitely don't. And so again, just thinking about like if you uh, like if you contour your face at all, it's just where the contour would go. It's just how we are. Instead of wearing some beauty makeup. <laughs> Super exciting. Put a little bit more in there because now we're gonna do the same on this side. Really just getting it in there. Nice. That looks good. And then we can throw some green in there. Maybe that bruise was starting to heal just a little. There's some green paint in there. We got some down here. Do you ever worry about getting like the makeup in any facial hair, eyebrows, beards, or anything like that? The good thing about all of this, it's a water base. So mm -hmm. it washes out. Okay. It's really nice. Um, really easy to work with. And so if it does get into the hair, it, it, it washes out really easy. Mm -hmm. um, these kinds of paints too, we've used in the theater to create beards. 
So if like someone is a little patchy, you just kind of fill it in with a stipple brush. So it was really easy to like Ooh. fill somebody in. I'll throw some purple in there. Looking real beat up, Joan. <laughs> you definitely see more gray in his complexion and the bags around the eyes. I got there's some green in there. You don't want him to look too much like Beetlejuice. So if you're wanting to throw a lot of green and then you'll get too Beetlejuicy. And then zombies too are three dimensional. So like, don't forget down in the neck. And if we were doing like hands and stuff, we won't do just hands, but yeah. like, yeah, don't forget like well, the whole body. And then two, like, Maybe your zombie ran into something. So like if he has a giant bruise on his face, if he has a giant cut. So like really think about your whole story. Like what's happening with your zombie. Getting in, getting into the, the finer details. Oh, that's cool. When you're doing a bruise, what, I, I think this is right, but I'm not sure. Do you do like darker in the center and then greening out as you get out from the center? Mm -hmm. So it works its way inward. Okay. So think, like when you have a bruise, you've got like really dark and then it gets in like lighter to like a little bit lighter outer. Mm -hmm. That makes, that didn't make sense. That, didn't, that wasn't words. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, it's, um, you do light on the outside and then it gets dark like really towards that center okay center part because that's where like the center so like if you got hit it would be like that center part would be like the congealed blood mm -hmm. on that center part but then like the green would be like coming out because that's where it's healing yeah nice and then we also have So is that yellow the same consistency as the bruise wheel? It is, yes. We're just doing yellow for more of like a jaundice skin. Yeah. Have y'all already picked outfits for Halloween? Not yet. What about you? Uh, I haven't picked an outfit for myself for Halloween, but my son and daughter, um, my daughter is going to be a princess unicorn. I don't know what a princess unicorn is or how she came up with it, but it is a basically a unicorn with a tutu skirt and a crown. And a, oh. of course the unicorn piece. <laughs> <laughs> my son is gonna be a pirate. Um, but we had to have a negotiation about, cause we're a weapon free household. So he couldn't, he had to be a pirate without a sword. That was, those were the rules, but pirate and a princess unicorn. That's what we're going to have going on in our house. I look forward to seeing it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> The zombie's starting to look like he's been to war. He's got a little cuts and cuts and bruises if he's been walking through fences. What do you think is the best way if you wanted to give him like a gash or a cut, would you go with like a lip liner or a liquid lip or what, how would you do that? I would do, so you could definitely do a lip liner if you didn't have, um, like a brown, so starting off with a brown um, and then layering on a red over the top. I think that would be the best way to do it. So like if you have a brown lip and then layering on a red over the top would be the best way to do that. Cool. Just so starting out with like, like if we wanted to do.
and then and then if you had some fake blood just dropping a little bit of fake blood over the top of that So my 10 year old son is going to dress like Gordon Ramsay. How can I make him look old? If you have, you need a shade of your, like your shade and then a shade lighter and a shade darker of your foundation. And then just doing, so like where your, your frown lines and your crow's feet and then drawing just like a little bit of crow's feet and a little bit of frown line because Gordon Ramsay frowns a lot. <laughs> yes, that would be awesome. I want to see that, Maria. I want to see your son as Gordon Ramsay. I want to see a 10-year-old with crow's feet. I'm excited about this. <laughs> well, he's been and growing out his hair so that we can spray paint it and like stick it up, you know, make it look like <laughs> cool. That's going to be incredible. I told him that the only time he can say bloody hell and be okay with it. Oh it God. was um, last year, actually, I was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, rest in peace, um, for Halloween, and I did, like, that, like, I just Googled it, actually, and it turned out pretty well, put in the, that same thing that you said, Meredith, to do the darker and lighter wrinkles and all that good stuff. Oh, his cut's really coming through now. So is that the brand of fake blood you like the best? This is. So it is Mayron Sage Blood. Sorry, there's a glare. Okay. Um, is where do you get stuff like that? Is it do they sell it at Ulta or do I need to go to Michaels or We got this one. It is at um Lucy in Disguise. Ooh. Which is okay. They, but any, any fake blood, I think just like at any costume shop is just a good fake blood. This one is um, mint flavored. So if you accidentally swallow it, it's okay to swallow. Um. Joe appreciates that. <laughs> <laughs> so in case, like, like if we wanted to do like, just in case it's like, he was like gnawing on a leg or something. I feel like blood around the mouth of a zombie is very on, on point. That's a true to form. Just like, just getting it, just getting a little zombie. And then it's, it's kind of nice to do. Just like in the, in the eyebrow, just like kind of getting a little messy. Zombies. Zombies are pretty messy. Yeah. Um, and then, too, so like say Joe's been dead a, a week. We're going to put, so this is spirit gum. This is what, if you've ever stuck on fake ears or a fake mustache, mm -hmm. that's what this is. And so what you do is you put it on just a little bit, and we're going to make Joe pretty sticky right here right his nose. And then a little bit goes a long way because, and you want to get it really, really sticky, like really tacky. Okay. We're going to put on some maggots for Joe. That's so cool, but also so gross. Oh, it's very gross. <laughs> You just needed some friends. You did. It's not in your nose, I promise. <laughs> There's a lot of trust there, I'm seeing. <laughs> he hasn't opened his eyes once. <laughs> Little friends are popping off. So then we're just gonna Are you using a little more base to cover up the spirit gum? Yeah, so just around where the maggots are, just around his nose. Okay. And then if you wanted to get real crazy with it, you would put 
we I did we just didn't have time to put some putty. So where you would get spirit gum, you could get some putty and mm-hmm. then put it around like it was like built up around the maggots. Ooh. If we wanted to get really crazy. But just the maggots where his nose is. And then I'm just gonna put a little more color. Oh, you're fine. There we go. I think we have our little zombie. Yes, it looks great. Can you come close to the camera, Joe, so we can see the up close? Ooh. And then you always just kind of want to, at the end, so just with a white powder. Mm-hmm. Just any translucent powder is fine. It can be your skin tone if you don't have a white translucent, but then just to set everything. And this too will like really make your zombie really pale. Yes. Just kind of, and it'll set the blood as well. We lost the magnet. How long do you need to let the fake blood dry before you add anything on top of it? Um, It'll dry. It'll honestly, it'll stay pretty wet for a while, but you can powder over it and it'll just kind of do its own thing. Okay. But I just kind of powder over it and then it'll like, then it'll get like, if you powder over it, it'll look real crusty. Mm -hmm. Like he ate a snack and then went and rolled around in the dirt. Okay. (laughs) Did his thing. That's. That's your, I think you should be a zombie for Halloween. You've got the look <laughs> down. That's your basic zombie. There you go. It looks great. <laughs> Thank you so much. That looks Thank awesome. you. Does anybody um, have any other questions for Meredith? Any tips that you're looking for for Halloween? I'm checking the chat. I think that's it. All right. Well, we're going to move on to the drinking portion of the night and I'm going to bring Gabby back. Perfect. Thanks, Claire. And thanks, Meredith. And thanks, Joe. This was so cool. I was just mesmerized as I was watching y'all. Um, and we'll get back to questions if anyone comes up with them afterwards. But I wanted to introduce Katie. So like we mentioned, she graduated in 17 and she is um, based in the DFW, and she will be guiding us through three different drinks today. Um, So um, everyone, if um, you need to, this is the time, the perfect time for you to start getting all your stuff together. Um, Karen just posted in the chat what you'll be needing for the different drinks, and um, we will let Katie take it away. So uh, help us welcome Katie through, well, no one has their camera on, but you know what I mean. You can Katie's here and she'll take it away. Hi, everybody. This is so exciting and so fun, and I'm really happy to be here. Um, I actually just started at a brand new hotel here in the DFW area as a bar back. Um, so I'm going to work because it's like, pretty, it's a pretty swanky hotel. And so they needed people with like five to 10 years experience. Um, So I'll work my way up. But I like, I went to bartending school. So I have a certification in mixology. Um, I also have a drinks Instagram, cocktails x Katie, K-A-T-Y, if you want to follow it. Um, But yeah, we're going to do some spooky drinks. And I'm really excited about them. And so let's get started with one of the more simple ones. Um, I'm calling it the biohazard. And a rocks glass, which is like this type of glass, will be just fine for it. But I, if you want to be extra festive, you can get beakers for like a little science experiment vibe. Um, So first you'll need um, some ice. Fill up your beaker all the way or glass with ice. Um, And you'll need an 
ounce and a half of citrus vodka and most like flavored vodkas are actually sweetened um and unless you want this drink to be extremely sweet you just want one that's infused with vodka i mean lemon and or citrus and i actually bought one that i thought was just gonna be infused but then i tried i made these all last night um and it was sweetened so um fun fact you can make a citrus vodka with just regular vodka and lemon juice um same thing with i mean it's pretty easy to infuse um vodka especially it's it'll take the flavor of pretty much anything um so i'll be using tito's straight from austin and i'm gonna make with some lemon juice as well so um and you don't have to shake every cocktail but um i'll do it just to get a good mixture going um, so you got to get your, this little measuring tool is called a jigger with a J. Um, so this, the top, top half is two ounces, the littler half is one ounce. So we're going to do for us an ounce and a half of vodka and, um, if you, you, if you use a shaker, um, it's best practice to pour all of the alcohol um, first before you put in the ice because otherwise, like, well, you're making, like, or depending on how fast you do it, um, it could water down the um, drink. So always add your ice last. So starting with an empty shaker tin, we got a vodka here, gonna do a generous little squeeze of lemon. I hope that'll be enough. And then we'll use some triple sec, which you might know triple sec is one of the other ingredients in a margarita. So we're gonna do a half ounce of this. So just filling this top portion up halfway. And then the part that makes it um, green is going to be a melon flavored liqueur. So Midori is a really popular one and um, this is already sweetened. So that's why if you had used a sweetened citrus vodka, it would be really sweet. So really this is gonna be like the sweet um, aspect of it. So that's why I wanted to just use a plain simple vodka and then make um, put the lemon juice in it. Also, if I'm going too fast or you have any questions, just use the chat. Um, I hope you're, I hope this is uh, not too chaotic. <laughs> um, all right, so one ounce of this. So gonna fill the top half all the way, throw that in there. And we're going to get some eyes. And depending on how much, you just need a little bit more than what the level of the liquid is in ice, if that makes sense. I can show y'all. Like, I mean, it's not a whole lot. Um, so let me see. Oh, and we have a question. I can read them to you if you want. OK, that yeah, no, I just saw that. Um, a substitute oh. for alcohol. Um, Well, the good thing about vodka, I mean, the closest thing is going to be gin, but that also has a really distinct flavor. Um, and sometimes like wouldn't go with um, things that you're able to mix vodka as easily because vodka is like flavorless and will take over the flavor. So if you aren't a vodka fan, I think like a drink like this is going to the other flavor, like the Midori the melon liqueur is gonna kind of mask the scent and it's gonna take the flavor profiles of like the lemon and the um, uh, the melon. So on it, like, I know there's a lot, like vodka is a, a very strong spirit, but you can 
always just add less vodka to get less of that vodka taste. But a lot of the times in like vodka based drinks, especially if it has like a sweetened liqueur in it, you won't be able to taste it. So that's kind of nice. But um, Kelsey says that makes sense, which yeah. it makes sense to me as well. I'm yeah. learning so much already. <laughs> okay, good. Yay. Okay. So shaker tin, pop that on there. You got to hit it so it shakes, stays, and then you're going to shake. And I'll stop shaking so you can hear me. You're going to shake basically until your hand starts feeling cold um, and that there's like a bit of condensation on the shaker tin. That's how you know it's like cold, good to go. So. strainer tool. If not, if you just have the shaker tin, I'll show you a fun trick. When you separate it, you can just go like this, but I'll show you with the strainer. You just kind of separate it a bit at the top if you don't have a oh, strainer. fancy. <laughs> um, oh, you can't. All right. See, it has that nice biohazard green color, and then we're going to top it off with a splash of lemon lime soda. Give it some bubbly aspect. And that's another thing, like for this drink, the lemon lime, like the soda will cut down on that uh, vodka taste. And then a little, a little stir your straw. This one's a little big, but uh, I didn't have any cocktail straws, but there you go, that's the, uh, biohazard so that's the first one um yeah i don't know am that i look great <laughs> yeah no that looks great and we have uh some comments in the chat um oh yeah kelsey that makes sense and then jessica thank you both uh for a fun evening this has been a great evening it has been a not so spooky uh halloween well not halloween but uh october event <laughs> yeah. um if anyone, if no one has any questions about this specific drink, then we can um, move over, um, move on to the second drink of the evening. Uh, we do have three drinks for y'all, so you can have them all today. You can make them for your loved ones, uh, whatever your preference is. We are all here to learn and we're so excited. Um, for the, I did have a question for myself for that drink actually. Um, for people who don't drink soda, would you say adding kind of like a flavored sparkling water would work or not really? Yeah, totally. You could do a flavored sparkling water. You could do like a lot or even plain. And then um, if you still want that sweetness, add um, a little bit of simple syrup in it, which you can make simple syrup at home. I just happen to have some. Um, it's literally equal parts sugar, equal parts uh, water, and you just oil that on the stove until it turns clear and let it cool, you're done. Super easy. Perfect. Um, and yeah, um, Kelsey, I take like this, I can still taste the vodka, but it's not as like, um, what's the word? Like strong and bitey, I guess, as like a, like the pure alcohol taste, like you do get the flavors of the melon and stuff, so. You could always just do, instead of what, um, an ounce and a half, do an ounce. Um, do equal parts vodka and melon, and then it'll be sweeter and more melony. So, yeah. Um, let's move on to, I'm gonna do the Witch's Brew Martini. This one's fun, <laughs> and it looks pretty. So here, I gotta clean this out, so. In the meantime, while you're um, cleaning that up, do you have a favorite drink yourself? My drink favorite choice. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I drink a choice. Um, I recently like, and I realized tonight as I was like writing down the ingredients, I was like, oh no, I didn't prepare a whiskey drink. So I'm sorry to the whiskey drinkers out there. Um, hopefully, maybe we'll do another holiday one, Christmassy, and I'll have something there. Um. 
but I, I like old fashions a lot. Those are really good and super easy. Um, I like flavored martinis, which is just, again, vodka or gin and like a flavored liqueur. So, which I'm using um, actually one in each drink. So you'll get to like, we had the Midori, which is the melon liqueur. Um, and for this one, we're going to be using a um, black, it's a black raspberry, but it tastes kind of raspberry. It's like a good mix. Um, so what you'll need for this one is a cocktail glass. And if you want um, cocktail glasses, like if you don't want to put it in the freezer to chill it, because um, they're very delicate, a secret hack to chill your martini glass is to just put some ice water in it, like two minutes before you start making the drink and then just dump it and then you have a chilled glass. <laughs> so life hack. And um, this one is gonna have a uh, sugar rim on it. So, and this is something that I learned, I didn't know you, um, like for like a salted rim on a margarita, you need, um, it can't just be like water Otherwise, it'll fall off. It needs to be lemon or lime. So I'm going to just, and you usually can't really taste the citrus. I mean, maybe when you're sipping it a little bit, but it kind of just helps whatever you're putting on the rim stick there. So um, yeah, so we'll do a little lemon rim. And you just, I don't know if you could see, I cut it in like went a little wedge and then you just cut a little slit in the middle um, to be able to kind of hug the, the lip of the glass. So you'll put that on there and just slide her around a couple times. And then I made this black sugar. It's really easy to do. Um, and you're just gonna, let's see, it'll let me. Oh, it's very dry. Um, I made some black sugar with just um, red, green, and blue food coloring earlier today. Um, and then just let this sit and dry. A little, a little too dry, but that's okay. Doesn't that's okay. You still get the notes of the sugar in there. The essence of what it's the of what you were going for. Yeah. All right, I'll put it on the best looking side. <laughs> okay, so which is brew martini? This one's easy. It is a flavored martini and flavored martinis are super easy. It's just vodka or gin and a flavored uh, liqueur or like at our restaurant um, or at the bar at the hotel that I work at, we like a lady ordered um, a lemon basil martini. So that's again, just doing the vodka, lemon juice, and we have a, like a herb garden in our, on our patio. And so I ran out, grabbed some fresh basil leaves, you, um, to like activate an herb. If you put in a cocktail, you smack it. So that's fun. So like mint with mojitos or basil, you'll just smack it leaf by leaf. So yes. All right. Which is brew martini? Let me rinse this. And if any of y'all have like favorite cocktails or what or questions about anything, I'll do my best to answer them or flavors that you'd like to try. Um, yeah. Thanks. And I actually did end up linking your uh, Instagram in the chat. So for anyone that wants to be uh, following Katie along, she has her recipes. I just followed her myself all the recipes and I'm so excited yes and a lot of these like if you don't drink um a lot of these could probably be mocktails I mean you just sub like a juice and sparkling soda or sparkling water or sparkling um soda or yeah soda not you get what I mean <laughs> so two ounces of vodka to start so throw that in there and then we're gonna do an ounce of raspberry liqueur and this is one of my favorite um spirits it's called chambord it's out of france and it like even the bottle is just so cute and this is one of like the little mini bottles so um 
But yeah, you can make a lot in this. It's another sweetened liqueur, so flavored liqueur. It smells so good. Oh my gosh. It would be amazing in like a, um, it could be like a chocolate covered strawberry martini. I need to make one of those. Ooh, it, like, it, smells, it smells so good. Okay, so an ounce of this. Um, earlier today, you mentioned chilling the martini glass. What's the benefit of that for someone who normally doesn't drink martinis? I mean, it just keeps the drink cold. It. And it, like, <gasps> um, I get, yeah, and it's just, yeah, keeps the drink cold instead of putting, like, a cold, chilled um, liquid into, like, a room temperature glass. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, makes it a little bit nicer. Like, you know, like a frosted beer glass. Yeah. That yeah it sense. just kind of elevates the experience. Um, and this, I'm actually going to put some food coloring in this to make it a little bit darker, witchier. Because um, I made it last night and it wasn't the um, or color that I wanted. So we're going to try this out and hopefully it comes out a little uh, uh, darker, witchier. <laughs> if you didn't have the Chambord, is there another liqueur that would work? Um, yeah, I mean, they're like for a berry liqueur. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's uh, like knock I don't want to say knockoff but like <laughs> knockoff liqueurs for every name brand liqueur like this is um like the uh the, they're called um like the premium brands I guess of like like spirits mm -hmm. um so like this is um like the knockoff or left like the I don't know, cheaper, but it's still good. Like it tastes, yeah. it tastes fine. Like you're gonna, but there are like, like for um, like a triple sec, a, like a premium triple sec is gonna be Cointreau yeah. or Grand Mar Marnier. Okay. Um, and I have Grand Marnier, so I could show y'all what that looks like. People call it grandma in the biz. <laughs> so. Grandma cocktail is my kind of cocktail. That's yeah. uh, what I'm looking for in my life. Um, how did you get into bartending? Um, you know, I lost my job during a pandemic and was like, this sounds fun. So I went to <laughs> bartending school. Um, yeah. Uh, and I think I a lot it. of people are doing that during the pandemic, are finding new hobbies and new, new skills um, yeah. that they didn't know before. And I actually, I bar, I mean, I was a barista, so I made coffee for five years. I actually worked at Joe's on campus from... <gasps> my sophomore to senior year. So like, wow. so I'm going to shake this. And hopefully this is a nice, oh, it looks purpley. So and you're just gonna let's see switch this and we're gonna pour oh yeah that's oh my gosh pour. wow i don't know the camera doesn't do it you see it's, it's dark it's the perfect drink for a spooky night uh -huh. so it's like a dark purple it looks like, um, I don't know, purple slime vibes. So, <laughs> purple slime. Oh, wait, I forgot. It's not done. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just excited about the color. <laughs> we're going to top it with some uh, champagne, but uh, Prosecco works. Any dry um, to kind of give it that bubbly cauldron feel um and yeah there you go but you can actually i just tasted it and it tasted great without the champagne but also good with 
So, your preference. Yeah, I'm sure that everyone at home is enjoying the cocktails right now. Um, yes. I am so excited to see the next one. Can you re tell us a little bit more about what the next one's going to be? Yes. So, it's fall, it's October. You know what that means. Pumpkin spice, boys and girls. So, um, yeah, we're going to be doing a pumpkin spice white Russian. And a white Russian is pretty much just vodka, coffee liqueur. Um, Kahlua is the popular brand, but once again, there's always a knockoff. Um, but yeah, just vodka, liqueur, um, and half and half. And that's it. You can add simple syrup to make it a little bit sweeter. Um, so let's get started on this one. I might need to get more ice, so you might have to um, excuse me for just a moment on that. So um, uh, and to make, so this one is also going to have a rim, but it's going to be um, cookie crumble, so you could either do like gingerbread, um, or this is like a speculose cookie, um, all crushed up, so. Or oh, the same one that they do the cookie butter with? Mm-hmm, yes. It sure is, so we're gonna, I'm almost out of honey, but that's okay. Just need a bit to put on a plate to make it easy to rim. Um, and real quick, let me grab, let me grab more ice. So, um, give me one second. Perfect. And while Katie comes back, y'all feel free to put your favorite drinks in the chat. I love reading about them and drinking all the drinks. So you may be inspiring the next cocktail. Um, and we do have a question that we will answer later today, as soon as Katie is back, because I am by no means a certified mixologist, so I am not qualified to answer any of those questions. But that's actually a really good question, so I'm excited to hear the answer myself, because I love, <laughs> I love cider and all things pumpkin, so this is definitely the season during which I'm thriving. Um, so I'm just eager to know about the next one. Um, in the meantime, although this is actually not the season for it, my favorite drink is a margarita. Um, and Katie mentioned the old fashioned. So the question that we got from Kelsey was if you had any spinoffs for the old fashioned, uh, like a cider or a cinnamon. And then uh, Jessica is also a fan of apple cider and sparkling wine. Ooh, yeah good. so you could do like a rum like a spiced rum goes really well in an apple cider hot apple cider just throw some where are they um i left them over here <laughs> you know, just your fall spices and then a cinnamon stick, but for like an old fashioned. Yeah, you could do, um, cause an old fashioned is really just bourbon, uh, bitters, simple syrup. Um, there's different types of bitters. The like classic is the Ang Angostura bitters. Um, but there's apple bitter. Yeah, you could do apple bitters. Um, I think, like a rum, apple bitter, um, the simple syrup, and then still with like an orange peel is typical in an old fashioned. So that would, I think that would still be good and festive, but even like whiskey would, could also be good. Um, I don't know, there's many, like literally, that's the fun part of bartending is you can experiment to your heart's content and it, you'll find things that you never know would go great. Like, um, actually the other day at the restaurant, the, on one of the salads, we have candied pecans that the chefs make and 
they had after the candy pecans, like what's left over is this like very sweet pecan syrup. And the chef handed it to me and she was like, is there a cocktail you think you can make with this? And I was like, heck yeah, let me go to the bar and I'll come back. Um, so we did like pecan, the pecan syrup, like a little bit of it because it's very sweet and saturated. Um, but it had that nice pecan flavor in there and like that with like um, bourbon in an old fashioned would be really nice, like a spice and some cinnamon. Um, we were still workshopping it because it needed something else. But um, we did one with like the pecan syrup, vanilla vodka and Bailey's for like a creamy dessert drink. It was very nice. So that's the fun of cock. Like if you just have flavor profiles that like aren't even alcoholic, but you know, go together like an apple pie. Um, so I'm just thinking like with the apple cider, you said like you love apple cider. So a darker um, spirit is gonna go well in that. So either a bourbon whiskey or a, like a dark rum, spice rum would be good. And then um, the apple bitters in there and then cinnamon, like stuff like that. You can kind of, um, you know, the world is your oyster when it comes to bartending because there's so many, so many options. So yeah, but let's get um, started on this pumpkin spice white Russian. So I have my little plate of honey and you're just gonna like dip the rim in there to get some honey on there to make it stick. And then let's hope this works. Little, oh yeah, much better. Look at that, a beautiful rimmed rocks glass. That looks perfect. So that's another thing you can just use honey or agave or something for your, if you want to rim um, a drink. For a margarita, recommend mine though. I know when I started thinking of margaritas, I was like, oh, a tahini rim actually sounds really good. Yeah, we do that at a tahini rim mm -hmm. on like a spicy jalapeno marg. Ooh, that sounds good. That'll be for the next one. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, okay. So we've got our little rocks glass ready to go. And we're going to add, where's my measuring tool? I'm going to do two ounces of vodka, but you could also, I might, anywhere between one and a half to two ounces, depending on how strong you want it. So just toss that in there. And next, we're going to do some coffee liqueur, which is the Kahlua. But we're going to, um, to make it to have that pumpkin spice taste, um, we're going to add some spices to it. So grab your Kahlua, and we're doing one ounce of this. Throw that in there. And I already like measured out. You don't really need a lot. Like I did um, ginger, nutmeg, um, allspice, and toss that in there. And you know, whisk it up. It's pretty well incorporated and there's no like big chunks of it floating around. Um, and we will pour this in there. And since I'm using um, an unsweetened uh, creamer, uh, you can put simple, I'm going to put a little bit of simple syrup in it to get a bit of sweetness. But if you, if your creamer is sweetened, you probably don't need um, the simple. So just uh, about a quarter ounce will will be fine, depending. Once again, it's all up to you what you what you're want out of your cocktail. If you want sweeter, less sweet, um, it's all up to you on the measurement. So that and 
Then we just top it with the pumpkin spice creamer. Beautiful. And gotta stir it. Incorporate all those good flavors. And then just for, you know, Garnish a little cinnamon stick for the aesthetic. For the aesthetic, and there you go. You have your pumpkin. Oh, nice that looks good. And yeah, that's pretty easy. All of these are pretty easy. Um, I didn't want to do anything too complex, but yeah, it's uh, all of the other, like I know you can get. Like a, like a cheaper coffee liqueur, but especially if you're mixing them, like the different, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, just up to you and your preferences. So thank you. Katie, could you FedEx that, you? Katie, Katie, yeah. that to me? I don't have any of the oh. ingredients and I really want it. <laughs> I know, I'm, I wanna take a picture of it. Otherwise I would take a sip, but I'm gonna take a picture for for the gram. For the gram. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so much again to both Katie and Meredith for joining us. Does anyone have any uh, questions for either of them? And it's fine if you think about them later. Uh, like we said, um, we will be posting, well, uh, these sessions are recorded, but the benefits of attending live is that you can ask questions and interact with them. You don't have, they don't have to be burning questions. Um, but we will also be sharing, if you email them to CU alumni at sedwardstudy.edu, if you think of them tomorrow or the following day, we will also get them to Katie and to Meredith. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can reach out to me on my Instagram, cocktails x Katie. <laughs> so. <laughs> if either any of you try the looks or um, uh, any of the make some cocktails at home, please take some pictures and send them to us. We would love to see the products of your work. I want to see all your zombies and cocktails and zombies drinking cocktails. I think yeah. that would be better. So. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to see all that stuff. So you can either email it to us at SEO alumni or you can um, shoot it to us via Instagram. I did want to mention um, we have a couple more upcoming events if you're interested. So tomorrow we have two events. Uh, we double booked ourselves, but we have a Holy Cross webinar. This is the 200th anniversary of Holy Cross and it doesn't look a day over 50, right? So, um, and we also have a top work career talks. So we partnered up with the career office and we're doing professional development opportunities for y'all. Um, we also have our an alumni open house next week. So you get to meet with chapter leaders and get to know people in your area and learn more about the ways to be involved. And then for our next Hilltop Learning Series, it'll be on November 19th. We're gonna have Shelby Henderson, who's an 09 grad, and she's gonna show us how to cook a Thanksgiving dinner. So it's all about the getting you ready for the what's to come. Today, we got us ready for Halloween and for October celebrations. Um, and then next month, we want you to be ready to host or to just eat it all. Either way, we just want you to give you the tools. Um, and then lastly, we have a topper trivia night on December 9th. And so you um, you should be getting emails about this, but if not, you can update your contact information online at um, on our website, which is posted on the chat and stay up to date that way. And we loved having you. So thank you all so much. I am, um, Shouting out to both Meredith and Katie. Y'all did so great today and we really appreciate your help and your hosting. So thank, thank you all so much. Everyone. It was so fun. So I'm glad you enjoyed. Let me know <laughs> if you have questions or I'm here for you. Thank yeah. you. I have a question. Where'd you get your outfit? I hopped on late because I had a staff oh, meeting, yeah. but it's so cute. How are you? Um, I got Good. this at a thrift store. Nice. So it's like, I don't know, classic tacky sweater. But And then I got um, this hat at, I want to say, oh my gosh, I got it in Austin, the, the Goodwill, actually. But it was like 
during Halloween, they have like new things at Goodwill. So I didn't buy like a used witch's hat at Goodwill. Good choice. Yeah. But then the earrings actually are from uh, another SU alumni made them Jen Spall. Um, and her, oh, they're from Jen. Yeah. Here, I'll type in her. Um, let me find her website. But yeah, no, she makes okay. like spooky, spooky uh, jewelry. I bought, I have these and then a, a Ouija, Ouija board kind of earring. So let me, someone else asked about those. Um, yeah, this is her website. But yeah, she was my old roommate, my. Wow, I'm unreasonably excited. I'm so yeah, yeah, no, it's awesome. I'm like, I'm supporting my roommate and I see So good deal. Thanks, Katie. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Have wonderful. a great day. And thank you. Good night. Good night. Are we, are we good to go or do we need to? We're good to go, Katie. Okay. Thank you so awesome. much. And we'll Thank try you. to um, make, next time I'm up with my sister, I'll try to get up to that hotel. I'd love Please to see do. you. Please do and come if you'll, I'm the short blonde one and just come find me and just be like, it's Karen from, and it's hard with the masks, you know, so. I know, but we got to do it anyway. You did a oh. super job. You deserve to have a drink. Go have Thank one. Thank you. I might have three. <laughs> I'm okay with that, you know? Okay. All right. Have a good All day. right. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Bye.